update is some breaking news on a Monday. Adam Schefter, what can you tell us? All right, Phil, we've got another quarterback deal done, this time in Kansas City. The Chiefs have essentially moved up $210 million from Patrick Mahomes' deal into the next four seasons. It's the most in a four-year span. It's all guaranteed, and obviously the Chiefs were paying close attention when the other teams did deals for Jalen Hurts and Lamar Jackson and Justin Herbert and Joe Burrow. And once those deals happened, the Chiefs recognized that Patrick Mahomes, Mahomes still had nine years left on his deal. He had fallen to the eighth highest paid quarterback in the game, and they felt they needed to vault him back up into the top highest paid quarterbacks in the game. That's the leverage you have when you're the best player in the National Football League, and that's why the Chiefs redid the deal with over $210 million worth of money moved up in the deal, but there's still nine years left on the contract, so Kansas City and Patrick Mahomes continue to be in a long-term relationship. Hey, man, we need to win the TV Super Bowl or something. Yeah. Is that what? Yeah, yeah, what you know that what? treatment at? You know what's crazy is Patrick Mahomes is now the richest quarterback once again in NFL history, and he's still a bargain. Right? Goodness. I mean, the dude is just Christ. ridiculous. So congrats to Patrick Mahomes. The rich continue to get richer. Welcome to NFL Dude, Live. You know this crew already. Yeah. Got LSU in the house. Marcus Spears. Oh, I got his own money. We got Ryan Clark. <laughs> Mina Kimes, of course, you already heard from her. We have Sheffy throughout the show. We are getting right to the football. As Zach Wilson and the Jets took on Dak Prescott and the Cowboys oh, down in Dallas. Let's get right to the highlight swag. You're supposed to be excited, not exasperated right now. Here's Dak Prescott <laughs> getting going early. He finds rook a tight end, Jake Ferguson. He's been really good for Dallas so far this season. Early seven nothing lead and then um i think if i were a defensive coach i would want to have michael parsons do this every play RC. listen michael parsons is a guy that they moved around on dan quinn's defense and it paid dividends yesterday against the jets one of many uh, three and outs forced by the uh, cowboys there on See, defense he's saying, like you're not Aaron, so don't do like Aaron. Yeah. just throw it to me right here and let me do what i do yeah, because this one would be happening if we had Aaron. but since we don't have Aaron, we got to do it this way That's rc takes good. it away right there that's right there's the pretty much the only offensive highlight for the jets all day <laughs> 68-yard touchdown there for Garrett Wilson. The first touchdown he's ever caught from Zach Wilson. All right, here we go. Later on in the game, Dalvin Cook gets a pitch to the left, and um, oh, guess what who? happened? Yeah. Guess who? Number 11. Michael first Parsons. of all, he gets slaughtered so much for his ability to get after the pass. So just watch him throughout the game mm -hmm. and how hard he plays and how fast he gets to the football. By the way, he comes out of the pile with that football. The Cowboys are the first team to allow 10 or fewer points, along with 10 sacks and five picks through two games since sacks were first tracked back in 1963, the only other teams to allow 20 points or fewer while hitting those same defensive numbers were the 67 Rams. They won 11-2-1, plus the 79 Steelers. They won the Super Bowl Dang. that year. The curtain? Yeah, I mean, this is ridiculous. So the defense was clearly very good, but more surprising had to be the Cowboys' offense, Mina, and what they did to an excellent Jets defense. How'd they get it done? <laughs> Yeah, first, credit to the quarterback. Certainly a, perform a contrast from what we saw from Josh Allen last week in terms of Dak Prescott playing within himself, taking what the defense was giving him. That ball was coming out super, fit, fit, uh, super fast. Really good, strong performance. But I felt like I personally had to give a shout-out to Mike McCarthy because I raised <laughs> questions about the transition at play caller this offseason. And through for the first two weeks, he's been fantastic. I thought in this game against a very good defense, he showed such a great feel for calling against their tendencies. Well-timed runs to take advantage of their aggression up front, obviously targeting CeeDee Lamb from the slot, and then a really, really good hand when it came to exploiting their coverages. I love this slant flat on first down. This is a Mike McCarthy staple, but clearly the Jets did not expect it on first down at the that backed up at their own goal line. The linebackers were sucked up expecting run. The tight end pulls the second level defender, so CeeDee Lamb gets a one on one. Just a great sense of when to take risks over the middle of the field. And then, as I said, a quarterback who delivered the ball extremely well and took advantage of those opportunities. Well, I think the big thing that this shows us is we need production meetings because basically Mina said every single thing <laughs> I, I was going to say about Mike McCarthy. But it, it brings me back to when we would have those battles with the Green Bay Packers, including the Super Bowl. And the way that Mike McCarthy would, would use Jordy Nelson and also use guys like Greg Jennings, putting them in the slot, using, him, using them as the number three receiver yeah. to stretch the field, getting the football out of the quarterback's hands quickly. And also, I like in the 
adjustment he made. You know, a lot of talk was about C.D. Lamb and what he was able to accomplish against the New York Jets. Mm. A lot of that wasn't accomplished against Sauce Gardner. After Sauce Gardner drops the pick six, yep. we now move C.D. Lamb to the other side. And not that D.J. Reed is in any way a pushover, but they took the path of least resistance. They attacked the zone. They found the spots that they needed to in order to get C.D. Lamb going. And on the other side of that, even though the run game, I mean, the pass game was working in the way it was, they ran the football over 40 times. The pound game, as the people said, was still strong. And when you can have that sort of physicality and allow Dak Prescott to play that efficiently, you have to give kudos to Mike McCarthy yeah. and his play calling. Also, Schottenheimer during the week and what he's doing in implementing the game plan. RC, you are absolutely right. It was 35 run It was over 40 or 35 runs between both of their backs. Tony Pollard had 25 carries, but it was 35 to 38 passes when mm. you start talking about guys in that position. Yeah. Here's the thing about Dallas, and we fought this battle in the offseason. How you going to win a Super Bowl if you run in the football? That was never the thought process that Mike McCarthy had. It was about being able to yeah. and using it in order to have a successful offense. I hate to throw shade, but I'm going to throw shade because I throw shade. Did you see the Chargers in overtime? I did. Throw three deep balls yeah. and go a three and out? Three incompletions. Mm -hmm. Though, that was the issue I had with Kellen Moore. Sure. It wasn't that he couldn't call plays yeah. and yeah. score points. Right. It was the fact that at opportunistic times right. when you need to run it and have balance, you win games that way. The fine line of taking a look at the full season-long numbers versus some versus, situational there stuff. You go. Right? You there know, you go. I love when the production staff throws Shame. me a bone here. And how about this? The third most fantasy points scored this season, the Cowboys defense. Whoa. Which, all right, that actually is like semi-surprising. But the most surprising That's thing crazy. on this diagram is that Puka Nakua wow. is second, trailing only Tyree Does Kill, he, 59 God. and a half. Is he not type top three in the name game, though? I mean, number yeah. one in the name game. Yes. There is no <laughs> <number> <laughs> one about that. Puka. All right, back to Adam Shefty. Here's to get some Almost top stories. And Shefty, uh, we did not show you a ton of Zach Wilson highlights yesterday because there weren't a whole lot of them. Is he still, is he still the plan for the Jets going forward? Feel the Jets are standing behind Zach Wilson, the former second overall pick. They still believe he's going to show improvement. They still believe he's confident, and they still believe he's their best option out there. It's not exactly like they can go trade for another quarterback right now. They've cast their lot with Aaron Rodgers and then Zach Wilson, and I think they're going to continue to ride with Zach Wilson despite the fact that the team struggled during the loss to Dallas yesterday. Meanwhile, Saquon Barkley underwent an MRI today. There was some hope that he had avoided a high ankle sprain. We are still awaiting the update on whether or not it is an ordinary sprain or a high ankle sprain. Either way, it's going to be exceedingly difficult for him to play this week on a short week Eesh. with a Thursday night game in San Francisco. And so that is the situation there. And I'm told it is an ordinary sprain. Anthony Richardson is in a situation where he's in concussion protocol right now. And they will see whether he can clear it this week in time to get back to play next week. But he exited the game yesterday. Gardner Minshew came on for him and replaced him at that point there with a little bit of a whiplash effect. And a short time ago, the Bengals head coach, Zach Taylor, said that he does not know if Joe Burrow is going to be able to play a week from tonight against the Los Angeles Rams. They're evaluating the calf injury that he aggravated yesterday against the Baltimore Ravens. You saw him limping off the field towards the end of the game. It lingered with him all summer. He's still not right right now. And there's no question of it. There's no certainty about whether he will be right to play a week from tonight against the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, just a reminder, Shifty, the current quarterback two in Cincinnati is Jake Browning. He has completed as many passes in the NFL as I have. And I play <laughs> D3 college football. And I can barely throw the ball. Uh, the Bengals, of course, were looking to get to a one and one record yesterday. Uh, Cảm ơn các bạn. Trên tay mình đây là chú Pokemon Lizardon Mega X. Bây giờ mình sẽ phát thảo lại uh, sản phẩm về chú Pokemon này. Mọi người xem và thấy hay thì cho mình xin một like và một lượt đăng ký kênh để ủng hộ mình. Mình lấy tiếp tục, mình tiếp tục lấy động lực để ra tiếp video. Xin cảm ơn tất cả các bạn.